Hey guys, and welcome to another video on next generation sequencing data analysis. Um, in this video, I'm going to introduce you guys the R project. The R project is a software package, a tool basically, that you can install um, on your device. And it is uh, it has its own environment, meaning it has its own language. You you know, the com commands that we used in, in Unix right now in our um, in our terminal, they don't apply in R. R has its own its own rules, its own commands, and it's been actually made specifically for statistical computing. So it's used mainly by scientists. Um, but the cool thing in R is R by itself is actually not that great. But what makes R amazing are the software packages that people make for R. So it's open source. You know, everybody can make packages for R, and that means that a lot of a lot of people have made really really specific packages for specific fields of science and obviously there are really great packages for sequencing as well but also for many many other things there are packages ranging from you know um, uh, flow cytometric data analysis to um, obviously genetics and also just biodiversity in ecological systems so you can you there are packages for everything and that makes R really great. And I'm telling you, if you're afraid of R in the beginning, at the beginning, because it's just too much, you learn to love it. It's really, really great. It, it, it makes, it makes your life just easier. So uh, you can download R. Actually, R is usually pre-installed in, in all Linux distributions and all, as, as, as far as I know, in macOS, it's pre-installed. I, I'm not sure about Windows, but you can install it on Windows as well. We'll obviously stick with the Ubuntu right here that we've been using, the Linux distribution, because that's what we've been using in the previous videos. If you don't know how to install Ubuntu onto your Windows machine, as you can see, I'm using Windows myself, um, you can learn in the very first video of this video series. Okay, so I said it's already pre-installed, right? Let's open up our terminal, so CTRL Alt T, and um, you can now start R by just typing capital letter R and press enter, right? So now you're, you see how it changed right here. Everything changed and you have, you have this dialogue right here. So you can see which R version you're using 3.2.3. It's called wooden Christmas tree. Um, this is obviously not the latest version. You can tell this was released in 2015. The latest one has been released in 2016. Um, 3.3.1 bug in your hair. I don't know who comes up with these names, by the way. Um, all right. We'll stick with this version unless some package that we want to install says we need the latest version, but because I've tried all my packages, all the things that I do with 3.2.3, I want to stick with this for these videos. So you can close R again by writing in quit, brackets, um, open brackets, close brackets, and press enter. It's going to ask if you want to save your workspace and you can say no or yes, however you want. Um, now, as you can see, this is again command line based, right? It's a bit difficult to learn when everything is command line based. So it's nice to have a graphical user interface. Let's go ahead and grab us one because there are many out there for our studio, uh, for our, the R project. And the one that I want to introduce you guys to is the R studio. Uh, so you type into Google R studio and you go to their website. You can click download. Then it should ask you which version you want. You know, there's a commercial license one. Um, but you just want a free license one, you click download. And here you click uh, which distribution you want. We want the one for Ubuntu 12.04. I've installed the 64-bit version, so this is the one that I need. I click this, download it, and then you can go to your download folder. And if you're in Ubuntu like I am, you will get the .deb file. You can double-click this one, and it's going to open up a dialog where you can actually just click install, and that's it. It'll just install it. You can open it up then by going here to search your computer and you, I've already typed it in. You type in R Studio and you can open it up here. And that's the R Studio, the graphical user interface. Basically what this is, it gives you a user friendly interface, but what it actually does, it's still running R in the terminal just like we saw earlier. I'm just going to lock this to my launcher because we're going to be using this a lot now. All right. So I'm just going to explain to you guys what these different windows mean and how to use R. Just a quick introduction before we download our first package and work with it. So as you can see, this is the same dialogue as we saw in our terminal. So this right here, this window right here that says console is nothing but a terminal like here. Okay. So it just gives you a nice user interface. You type in your commands here, you press enter, and it's going to execute those commands for you. 
that's what the console is about. Um, right here, you have the environment. I'll get to the environment in a bit when we first start to introduce things into the environment. What this means is that you can store variables and store different results in strings, so in words, and it will appear right here. So if you store, for example, a whole table, like you can, let's say you store your sequencing information that we've been working with in the previous videos that have 500,000 lines. You can all store them in one word and it will appear right here. Okay, and then you can click it and it'll open up a table and you can work with it. So obviously we'll, we, we will do this in the next videos. Down here you have a browser, sort of a navigator throughout your, um, your own um, drive. And this is important because when you work with an R, you actually set a working directory. So you choose the folder that you want to work with, you press more here and you can set as working directory. All of these things that you do here, using a graphical user interface, you could just be typing with codes. So you can set the working directory by typing in set WD, bracket, open brackets, close brackets, and then the path to wherever you want your working directory to be. But, you know, we're doing this because it's easier. So you have different uh, options here as well. So you can go to plots. This will display your plots. What does this mean? In R, you can compute graphs. You can have, a, you can, you know, shift around your data so that to, to make a nice table that you can visualize in a graph and you can save the graph even in a variable just like any other thing and when you click it a plot will appear and you can save the plot as even a vector image meaning it's going to be in very high resolution you can zoom out and zoom in as much as you want you know this is this is for publishing which is hopefully what you want to do a lot packages i explained to you guys that many people make packages for r and they are what makes R great. So here you see all the packages that you have in your library and the ones with the ticks are the ones that are actually loaded into R right now so you can use them. Um, those without ticks, to load them in, you can just put a tick on or you can, or you can write library, open brackets, close brackets, and then a name of whatever the packages that you wanna load in. And if you wanna work with that package, you have to open it up. So each package then comes with their own sort of codes, their own commands that now you can use to manipulate your, da your data and analyze them, okay? Um, we'll get into more detail once we actually use that stuff. Help right here, every package comes with a help file for every command. So I told you, right, so this is a package called TCR, and this is the one that you, I'll introduce in the next video. You will install it. And in this package, you know, there are different commands that we can use. You can write all of these different commands and then we, you can click the help file here. It says how to use that command and it'll explain the different variables that you can use. The viewer, I'm actually not quite sure what the viewer is right now, but we'll probably, probably see if it's important throughout these tutorials. So this was a brief introduction into the, uh, into the workspace here. Now let's get into how our, the, how our language is based on. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna give a very small, um, uh, examples just to explain the structure. So R you can you could use as a normal calculator like you could just use uh, 3 plus 2 makes 5 right you enter it and the result is displayed here. So that's the result of 3.5 uh, 3, uh, 3 plus 2. Now you could also say I want the result 5 to be stored in a string in some some name. So you could say um, result and then to store something in there, you type it like this. You make an error like this, okay? So now you type in three plus two. It's not gonna display the result now, but did you see this coming up here? I'm just gonna display this as a list. It came up, uh, now you have in your global environment a saved variable results. It's actually called object in, in R. So you have a saved object that's called result, that's named result, and it stores the value five. So let's say we have another value um, we say, I don't know, just call it result two. I'm not very creative. And we store into there five minus three. Okay, so now you have result two. So what could you do? You can now actually say, I want to divide result one by result two. 
And obviously this is very easy. Why wouldn't I just type in five, five divided by two? But you, you get how you could use this to store much more complicated things into these names. Like you could store extremely complicated algorithms in one word and then just say, I want this algorithm to be used on this database. And this database has like 500,000 lines. So that's how you can, you know, think about the, the, the larger picture here. So you can store things in, in, in variables and you, we will be doing this a lot. So this is just very briefly, very, very short and brief introduction into R. But in the next videos, we get more into using packages and using them to analyze your data. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, go, go ahead and visit nextgenerationsequencinghq.com. In there, you'll find many more videos, uh, the same ones that you find in my channel, but also a course that you can take on how to do um, write bioinformatical pipelines. Um, this is for you to, you know, automate all the things that we do in these other videos in these shorter videos that you find on my channel this is for you to learn how to combine them all and write a script write a program so that you can run them on you know a whole folder full of sequencing data and it will analyze everything and then give you nice graphs and tables with stat statistical data and allow it allows you to interpret your data um, in a very neat way so go ahead and visit nextgenerationsequencinghq.com and uh, watch the next video to learn how to, uh, to how to install and use your first R package.